Hello, I'm going to share with you a style of beadwork seen mostly from the Southern Plains tribes in Oklahoma. Some people call it gourd and some people call it peyote. You won't find any consistency on what people call it, but what makes it even more confusing is that there are other styles that people also call gourd and peyote. So I'll show you the difference between two styles and then I'm going to do a project to make this keychain. So let's get going. You'll see the stitch on a lot of things. Powwow regalia, items for ceremonies, stuff around the house, jewelry, lighter cases, keychains, feathers, anything round, you can put beads on it with this stitch. Here are two different styles of this stitch. Notice the difference in how the beads stack. With the three drop, they count down one, two, three before meeting the next set of three beads. With the two drop, it's a one, two, one, two count, going up, down, up, down. The difference is in the math. With the three drop, you need to have a number divisible by six. That's because most patterns repeat every six beads. With the two drop, you can have an even or odd count number depending on the style you do. Notice the lines in the arrows and the chevrons. With the three drop, they're a little asymmetrical and it creates a line, that a swirl that goes down and around. With the two drop, the arrows and the chevrons are perfectly symmetrical and it creates a great pattern that you just can't get in three drop. To add to the confusion, there are other styles, also called two drop and three drop, that are not this style. There are many ways to do this style. We'll go down and around and left to right. If you're left-handed or see patterns a different way, going a different direction might be easier for you. The direction is determined by your thread going clockwise or counterclockwise when you start, and if your thread goes above or below the bead you skip. Notice that other ways changes the direction of the swirl. The beads most typically used in this style are Czech glass seed beads. They come in a lot of sizes, but the ones used most often are 11s, 13s, and 15s. The bigger the number, the smaller the bead. The numbers refer to the number of beads per inch, but it doesn't mean as strung end to end. It's actually stacked top to bottom. Here's what you'll need for this project. A wooden dowel. This is 7 16 cut to 2 inches. You can use any size. Um, find that at a craft store or a hardware store. Some buckskin leather or this is a car chamois from the automotive store. Cut a little bit wider than your dowel and just a long enough you know to make it as long a fringe as you want. This is the key ring to go in there. Some bulldog clips or any kind of clips and some glue. For the beading, you will want some beading needles and thread. These are size 10. They work fine with the beads we're going to use. I'm using Nymo. This is a thread that's been around forever. There's other threads out there, but that's a pretty good classic beading thread. And I'm using Czech seed beads in these colors. I'm going to do a veteran's inspired color palette and some scissors oh and some wax for your thread so let's get started and I'll show you how to use all this stuff so I just put the dowel in the middle fold it over leave about a finger length in there so you have room to put your keychain in when it's done and then just kind of center it and stretch it around the dowel then you can use these clips to pull it tight while it dries. It also gives you a, pulls a really nice edge on your keychain. So we do that and we'll let it dry for a minute and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to cut it. Now I'm just going to cut off the edges and because it's wider just kind of you can cut straight up if you want but I always kind of flare it out a little bit 
looks like I got a pretty good edge there. And on the bottom, flare that out a little bit. When we're done, we'll cut this into fringes. Just do the same on the other side. Then I'll just kind of roll it to smooth out those edges. And looks like we got a nice base to beat on. So let's get to beading. So let's thread our needle. I just snip it straight across. Some people like to cut it at an angle, but I always find that makes it fray a little bit. I put a little wax on the end and I'm just smushing it with my fingernail. Seeing a little prayer goes through and it did. First try. So for our starting row, I'm not gonna do a really long thread. Maybe just, maybe 24 inches. Um, just a single thread, but I'm gonna kind of fold it over on itself. And then we'll just get this waxed up. And then put a little overhand knot at the end. I do my knots, I put my finger in there and kind of twist around. I don't know what kind of knot you call that, but it makes a nice little fat knot. Okay. So we're just gonna start at the top, and put your needle through, just kind of pick up a little bit in there in your knot. If your knot doesn't have to be so tight, I actually don't do a knot. I um, will leave it loose so I can move my work up and down to get it centered. But for a beginner, first time, knot is definitely helpful. Here's how we do the starting row for this project. If you're using a bigger dowel, your numbers are gonna be different. I have the directions for the starting row and a number spreadsheet on my website. So for our starting row, we want to string up enough beads to go all the way around the object. So I think this is when you have to put a bunch on at once, just dip your needles into your beads. Okay, 31 goes all the way around with maybe an extra bead, so I'm just going to take one off. And so that 30 is a number divisible by six. If you remember, you have to have a number divisible by six because the patterns repeat every six beads. We did 30 around for the count, a number divisible by six. We took off one third, which was 10. So now here's a good time to recount because if you get this count wrong on the starting row, it just won't work. So I'm just gonna recount just to make sure. Two, four, six, eight, 10, two, four, six, eight, 10. Okay, so we're good. Now we're just gonna wrap these 20 beads left around. So now we're gonna go through every bead once. Now take note of this first bead that's right next to your knot. I call that the trickster bead because it can trick you up, but we're gonna go through all the beads a second time with our thread, but that trickster bead, we're gonna go through one more time. Let's see. So if you miss it, it won't work. So getting to it, and there it is right next to my knot. All right, so now just pull a little tension, not too tight because you don't wanna break your thread. It doesn't have to be too tight right now because we can put in some more tension later. So now I'm just kind of scooching the beads around except for two, I'll leave kind of two closer together. So instead of putting back on these beads that I took off, I'm gonna use some red ones so you can see how the three drop forms. So I think I've got 10 right there. Okay, so starting row's the hardest. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this a little better. So I've picked up a bead. My thread is coming out of this right here. So you're gonna skip one bead and then go through the next bead. Now you want your thread to go underneath the bead you skipped and 
to the left of the bead you skipped. So let me show you that again. So our thread's coming out here. We skipped this bead with our red bead. It's going, thread's going underneath that bead we skipped and to the left of it. And look, look there, it just popped up the top. We don't want that, just pop it back down. Use your thread to kind of scooch it over. So here's how you want that first bead to look. There's a turquoise, a red, and a turquoise. Doesn't look like anything now, but on this next stitch, you'll see the magic happen. Okay, so we're skipping a bead. Our thread's coming out here, going through a bead. Thread goes underneath the bead you skipped. Now you can see how that formed. One, two, three. So the bead you put on becomes the third in the three drop. So you just keep doing that all the way around with your 10 beads. Skip a bead, go through a bead. Make sure thread goes underneath the bead you skipped and to the left of the bead you skipped. Skip a bead. underneath the bead you skipped. And I'm just using my thread to kind of pull that over. One thing you don't want to do, and I'm right-handed, so um, when you're sewing, your natural inclination is to pull your thread this way what happens is that, look, it kind of, it's not doing it right now, but it can pull those beads out of alignment. So to get a little tension, just flip your piece over and just give it a little pull. Don't pull too tight at this point. It's kind of a real delicate balance, getting that tension. All right, so we're getting closer. to our trickster bead. So I said that bead, that first round we put on was the trickster bead and I forgot to tell you that it tricked us and it changed into another bead. The trickster bead is the first bead of the round you put on. So in our round of 10 beads that we're adding on, this first bead right here is the trickster bead. And it's so tricky because with this 10th bead, you're actually gonna go through two beads at once. So you can see your needle just naturally wants to go through there. So we'll just let it go through. And I'll show you why that's so important in a few more rows. But now we've got our starting row. So now you just want to check, make sure your pattern's right. You've got two blue and a red all the way around. Looks right. Something's funky here. Not sure what happened. Oh, here's what happened. My red bead didn't go to the left of the bead I skipped, so I can just switch that. Yeah, not a problem. So just I'm just scooching everything around. Everything looks good. Where my knot is, kind of slip down from below where the knot is. But I'll just give it a little tension. And at this point, I'm actually going to just snip off where that knot was because that's going to bug me. All right, so we're cool. All right, so now we've done the starting row. So now we're just going to do a row of red. So I'm going to count out 10, 2, 4, six, eight, 10. Now all that business with pick up a bead, skip a bead is over. Now we're just gonna go through, pick up a red bead and go through the next lowest bead. Do that all the way around. Now you may find your thread kind of gets caught up in the tail of what's going to be your fringe. I just fold it up. You could put a clip on it if you want. 
So now I'm just picking up a bead, going through the next lowest bead. You just keep doing that all the way around. So I'm getting closer to my bead number 10, which means I'm getting to my trickster bead, which has changed again. So now my trickster bead is this one. The trickster bead is the first bead of the round you put on. So this is my trickster bead. So what happens if you don't go through the trickster bead? So if you look, Let's get close here. Like, look where the thread is going. The thread is just telling you wants to go through there. And if you look at how the beads are aligned, here's your thread coming out. There's one bead space right there. But if you go through the trickster bead and you look how the thread drapes, it kind of drapes down, and there's two bead spaces right there. So if you didn't go through the trickster bead and put a bead there, Everything starts getting out of alignment. It starts getting crooked and there's just really no fixing it. So I'm going to do 10 more. Pick up a bead, go through the next lowest bead. Now you can see this is the first pattern we're forming. It's a row. So you make a row by going three times around with the same color. Okay, so we're going around. I didn't actually count out my beads this round. But counting out your beads is a good habit if you're beginning because then you know when you get to the trickster bead. So here I am, I'm at my trickster bead. Now it was this one. That was the first one I put on of this round, so I want to make sure I go through it again. So now we've done your first pattern. It's a row. And if you remember that I said the patterns repeat every sixth bead, technically this is really repeating every third bead, but we're going to do a few more rows and then go into a chevron and then you'll see why you need to have that number divisible by six. So I'm just going to keep going and doing a red, white, and blue pattern to honor a veteran, do the same thing. Pick up a white bead, go through a red bead, and I'm gonna go around three times with white to make a row. Now rows are the easiest pattern to start learning. It's kind of like doing figure eights in ice skating. Just practice. Might seem kind of boring for some people, but it's a good way to see how the patterns form, see when you make mistakes, then you can fix them. So if you remember, you know, with the tension now I'm kind of pulling it a little bit tighter, not too tight. It's a really delicate balance because you don't want to break your thread. All right, and there we've done our white row. So now we're going to go into doing a blue row for our red, white, and blue veterans inspired. So I'm just picking up a blue going through a white. And as you go along, just kind of do a pattern check, make sure everything's looking right. Oops. So I actually just went through a bead. I didn't mean to go through. So if you look at my pattern, I've got three blue, three blue, and then two blue, but I don't have a third blue there. So I'm just gonna go back through. Be careful when you're going back because you don't wanna catch your thread and split it. 
that was successful. Let's put that back over there. Give it a little tension. Now we're back on track. Okay, my thread is getting a little short. So I think I'm gonna end this blue row and add another thread. So I'm just gonna give it a little tension and actually go through a couple more and then thread another needle. Okay, so I've run out of thread. I'm gonna add some thread. Here I have about 50 inches of thread that I have waxed on another needle. I put a little color on this thread so you can see how we do this. So we're gonna make a lark's head. So you make a little loop, put your fingers up in there and just pull it through and it makes this little loop. And you can see that will slide up and down. So we'll just put that, our old thread, through the loop and then pull it tight and slide it up to that bead where it's coming through. So then with your two tails from your new thread, just do a little overhand knot actually going to do a surgeon's knot and go through one more time and then it's just pulled up against that thread and so now with my old thread I'm going to go through just one more time kind of pull that knot up in there now you don't want to do this knot where you have to go through the beads again I say that I think I actually did that so we might have some trouble coming back through there but I'm just going to with this is my new thread, go up a little bit, kind of pull that knot into that next bead. So there's where my knot is right there. And I might just leave my old thread on there for a minute, just in case I need to redo anything. And it's like I'm pulling a little tension on it. That's a good knot, it's okay. Here's the tail from my new thread. I'm gonna snip that off a little bit and then we'll just bead over it. It doesn't have to be right up against there because we'll just go over it with our beads. So now for my pattern that I have created in my head, I usually don't, um, oops, I need to make sure my new thread's coming out right. Okay, there we go. So you wanna make sure your new thread is coming out of a lowest bead. Doesn't really matter which, lowest bead because if you did your pattern right it's perfectly symmetrical all the way around okay so I've got it coming out of a lowest bead so now I've done three rows of red white and blue so now I'm going to go in and do about a row and a half of this turquoise and then go into a chevron So now everything looks cool. I'm gonna go ahead and take off my old thread. Give that a little snip. And then I'm just gonna put a little wax on that. Just kind of smash it down. Stick it to the leather so it'll stay out of my way. And I might just snip that will snip too. Okay, so let's keep going. So now I'm just doing some solid turquoise. And if you're following the same pattern, you, know, you kind of see how it gets a little harder when you're doing solid chunks to see what's happening in your pattern. So that's where you can count beads to see what's going on. So right here I've got my blue, my dark blue, and I've got one, two, three, four, five coming down. 
Well, here it's just four. So I know I haven't put a bead on there yet. And then you just keep going. Just always be checking, looking at your pattern, making sure you're following it. Doing the same thing with every bead. And there, my needle didn't go through the trickster bead. There we go. So I'm just gonna go one more round of this turquoise, and then go into a chevron. Okay, now we're gonna go into a chevron. I've got five of one color, five of another. So for this row, we're gonna alternate colors. I'm gonna go red, blue. So it takes six times around to do a chevron. Whereas when we were doing the row, it just took us three times around to make that row. That's why you need the number divisible by six because your pattern in the chevron repeats every sixth bead. And if you were only going to do rows or dots or stripes, it could be a number divisible by three, but you couldn't do a chevron and it have it repeat evenly all the way around. So now we're just gonna do the same thing five and five, but we're gonna do the opposite. So now we're gonna do blue, red. And now you just keep doing the same thing. But with red all the way around. So you do two rows of alternating colors and then a whole round of the same color. So now you can kind of start seeing the chevron forming And as you go along, just do a pattern check. Make sure you're making this little chevron. So now we've got most of the chevron and we're gonna go into another color while we finish the chevron. So because we've got this red, white, and blue theme going, I'm gonna switch into another color of white chevron. So I'm gonna go white and here's what it will look like. You've got part of your chevron going and then the first bead of your new chevron. We have to go two more times around to complete the chevron. So you can kind of see it happening. It's kind of like that first row, you just alternate the colors. Okay, we finished that round. And now we're going to finish this red chevron. So we start with the red. There you can see it happen. Took us six times of going around to make that chevron. So now we're kind of at the halfway mark for the chevron. So once you've got two beads of your chevron from alternating colors, then you just keep going, doing the same color the whole way around. And if you see, I kind of have a little bit of a gap there. I'm just gonna push my beads up, pull the tension a little bit. Okay, so we got to that halfway mark and now I'm finishing 
the white and we're gonna go into blue now. Okay, so we're gonna do blue, white. So now we are gonna finish that white chevron do blue, white, and we've done another chevron, and we're going into doing a blue chevron. All right, we're at the halfway point for that blue chevron. Now we do that fun row where it's all the same color, all blue for the whole row. Now, I will probably just start mirroring this pattern. I'm gonna use my thread to see, kind of as a ruler, so I just hold it to the top and then fold it over to see how much I have at the bottom. So if I just repeat this pattern, I still have a little bit I could do, but a little bit of room to bead, but I'm just gonna keep going and kind of see where I get. And I'm gonna go back into my solid Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna do white and have this blue be my center. Do another white chevron and a red chevron and then just repeat the pattern. Okay, here I am in the middle of doing a white chevron and I do a pattern check and I see I put on two blue beads. And so what I'm gonna do is take an awl and just put it in that bead, just crunch it, break it off, so I don't want it there. I could take the whole round off, and just start again from that point, which sometimes that's a great option so now it means I'm short a white bead. So I'm just gonna go up through this next bead as if I was in the middle of that row and put in that white bead. So now it's kind of crazy because now I'm going through three beads at once. So, you know, if I went through that one bead and put on my fifth bead to complete the chevron like here, you know, there's not really room for that. So I'm just gonna go through those beads and go all the way back around with my thread. And this isn't the worst thing, it kinda shores up your work a little bit. But I'm just going through two beads kind of all the way around. You could go through the lowest bead too, doesn't really matter. You just wanna get back to where that missed bead was and so we're getting there and so now here's my thread coming out it should have been coming out through here because here's my thread coming out I think it's sliding around my thread coming out and then one two beads so there's room for a bead white bead there now it's fixed Put on my last bead for that blue chevron. Done. Let's keep going. So now I'm mirroring my pattern. I'm gonna go into a red chevron because this blue is my center. Oops, I put on a red bead, need to wait. Glad I caught that one. 
So white chevron going into a red. So now I'm finishing up this red chevron and then going back into mirroring my pattern. Okay, now it's time to add another thread. I've got one going here already. I'm going to show you a different way than the lark's head that I did before. So here's where my thread's coming out. Here's my new thread. I'm going to put that up underneath the threads and the beadwork underneath. I put a little knot in the end and then I just kind of see that knot kind of catches a little bit underneath there. Then I just go back down and through getting to where my old thread is. So here's my new thread, here's my old thread going through. Then just do a little overhand knot or surgeon's knot, whatever knots that you like. And then here's my old thread, putting it up next to that one just to kind of tighten that knot in there. And then I'm just going to go back down and I'm going to go take my needle off and just let that old thread hang out. And then here's my new thread that has gotten caught over. Fix that. There we go. Nope. Oh, that was my old thread. There we go. Okay, now here's my new thread. I'm going to go down just one more then give it a little tug. Yep, that knot is holding. So now I probably have enough thread to get me through the rest of this project. So we're just going to keep going, doing this solid bit of blue. Okay, so here's where something's happened. I'm not sure yet, but I can't pull my thread through. It's just gotten stuck, so I'm going to untangle it a little bit. And it looks like I might have looped it in on something. I'm not sure, so I'm gonna take my bead off that was on there and just kind of pull it. And so, oh, I can see what happened. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I had a little loop there from my previous bead and I actually went through that. So if you can see where this loop is, I had looped through there before putting on the next bead. So not a problem. Just keep on beading. So I'm going to end my pattern here. You can see it's not perfectly symmetrical to the top, but I'm going to go back up and just add two more rounds to make it match this bottom. But to finish it off, I'm just going to go through the beads a couple of times just to tighten it up. I went through about a few beads and I'm just going to pull it pretty tight, but again be careful not to pull too tight because you might break your thread. But you do want to have have it tight on this row since it's the end. You want it to be a little bit stronger. All right, I just went around once, but you might go around another time um, just to make sure it has a lot of reinforcement. You know, I'm putting my needle down, just kind of giving a little tension. So then to end this thread, I'm going to go up a little few on this swirl. 
then back down. And you could, if you wanted to, just like pick a bit of the buckskin up on there to tie a knot right on there, but I usually will just put my needle under, catch the thread, and then do a little knot there. Oh man, oh good. Thought I was gonna get a loop that I didn't want there. So I've got a knot there. I'm gonna go up through the beads some more, just for fun. And come back down. Oh, I can't get through those beads now. So I'll just call it a day there. So I've got my scissors. I'm just gonna snip that. We're almost done. So now I'm just gonna flip it upside down, add a thread in there, put in two more rows so that it's a symmetrical pattern. Okay, so now I've turned my piece upside down because I wanna add in just two more rows. So I've got a piece of thread here with a little knot at the end, which I'm just gonna run up through there Oops, the knot didn't catch. Okay, there, caught that time. Underneath the beads is how I did that. I'm not really knotting it through a bead. So run my thread down and I want it to be coming through one of the lowest beads. And I'm just gonna add in Two more rounds. And I actually have more room on the top and the bottom. But for this demo, I'm just going to go ahead and finish this pattern like this. I could keep going on both sides. But this is fine. Okay, so now I've done those two rounds, giving it a little tension. Now, like on the other side, I'm just gonna go around once or twice to tighten that up and give it a little reinforcement. So I think that looks okay. And like before, I'm gonna go through, just like pop my needle under that thread and do a knot. Whoops, I just pulled that right through before looping it. Okay, now catch my loop. Okay, so I got my knot and I'm just going to run my thread up that swirl a little bit. Come back down. Okay. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna snip off my thread. You can also, if you have any little thread bits hanging out, you can burn it off with a lighter. See, look, I've got one right there, but I actually have one of these thread burners that works pretty well. So I'm just gonna burn that down a little bit, kind of stick it down there. And so there we go. So now we have finished our beading and now we can cut the fringe. I'm gonna use these little snips and I'm gonna do my cuts. I'm gonna do three cuts on each side. I'm gonna start in the middle and cut in half and then cut that half and half. So let's see how that goes. Okay, 
Okay, now we can put on our key ring. I'm gonna use one of these binder clips from before to kind of help hold that open. Just slide it around and pop that out. <laughs> you did it! You made a keychain! In some traditions, it's customary to gift your first piece away to someone. I've had someone in mind I wanted to give this to, to honor them for their service to our country. And I hope you have someone you can do the same. <laughs> I've only told you about a tenth of what you need to know to do this incredibly difficult stitch. For more resources, you can go to my website, blue.beadwork.com. You can link to my YouTube channel where there are more tutorials, and there's also some downloads to help you learn how to do this stitch. Thanks for watching.